Good afternoon guys, how are you doing? I thought I'd record the opening of the video that you're about to watch and from the title of this video um, you must know that this is all about my sourdough journey. So the first part of this video is me making my starter from scratch. For this I'm following starter recipe from a YouTuber called Joshua Wiseman. So in hindsight, I should have followed the recipe to a T. Um, the recipe actually asked for rye flour, but unfortunately I don't have rye flour and they're not too easy to get hold of in Brisbane. So because of that, I've used white plain flour and that actually makes the whole process a bit harder. So if you want to make your own starter, my suggestion is to follow um, Joshua Wiseman recipe to a T. So the second part of the video is when my starter has finally matured. Um, so after about four weeks to six weeks, my starter actually matured and ready to be used in the baking. So I was showing you how sourdough making process is like. It's not as easy as making a normal bread in my opinion. The third part of the video is me recording um, a really wet weather that Brisbane got about three weeks ago or four weeks ago and there's a lot of houses got flooded, a lot of business was affected. Fortunately we didn't get affected but I was just showing you guys what I got up to when I was basically stuck at home because we couldn't go outside for anything basically for days um so yeah that's the video i hope you enjoy it if you do please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do so that would really help my channel okay thank you bye This is the first day of making my sourdough starter. It's made out of plain flour and water. It has grown, I'm surprised. For the actual daily amount for feeding your starter, I'm actually following the Ultimate Sourdough Starter Guide by Joshua Wiseman. I will put a link in the description. And this is day three. It has gone up overnight and then come down in the morning but it has a lot more bubbles now. Decided to name my starter Dorleen. This is day four and I just finished feeding it and I always mark the line so I know how much it grew throughout the day. And then I just continue feeding Dorleen following the instruction until day seven. Day eight, it still didn't grow that much. So I started doubting my decision to use white flour Day 9 it still didn't grow as much as I want. I was expecting it to at least double or triple. So I started feeding Dolene with some wholemeal flour and I've decided to create a second wholemeal starter. Day 13, this is Dolene. She's very happy with the new food, but the second new starter has a lot more bubbles. And I've decided to name my second starter Holy Dole. Holy, holy. Okay, so this is day 15 for Dolene. I fed her for the last time. So day 16, I ended up throwing Dolene away. So rest in peace. And then just sticking with my second starter, Holy Dolly. Day 12, I've implemented a new feeding ratio of one 
in 5 and 5 after watching Bread Court tutorial in which he explained the science behind sourdough starter. This is very important guys, I've started introducing rye flour in the feeding instead of wholemeal all the time and also changed from tap water to cool boiled water. Apparently the chlorine stunted the growth as you can see in this experiment it makes such a difference. So this is day 16 of holy rye doli. Look how much um, bubbles it has now. I'm so happy. So I'm just getting to know my starter by marking the progress so I know what time it's peaked before it starts going down. And this is me seeing if it can triple in under five hours. Almost. Um, today I'm supercharging my starter with really big feed of 1 and 50 and 50 and look how much bubble it created and it finally able to triple in under 5 hours. Yay, it's finally time to bake. I'm using 75% hydration for this white sourdough loaf recipe if you want a copy of this pdf that has everything that i talk about in this video just leave me a comment and i'll send it to you so this is the temperature of the day i bake the first thing you do is mix your water with white bread flour i use the brand defiance because it has 12.9 percent of protein and then you rest it for one to two hours and then you put in the salt and the starter that has peaked you have to wait until it's peaked otherwise you won't have enough um, yeast content in your starter and then you mix it thoroughly with the flour and water until you don't see bits of starter anymore I'm measuring the temperature of the dough. I want to make sure it's within the 26 to 28 degrees Celsius. And this is when the bulk fermentation has started. You need to take note of the time now and rest for 20 minutes. Now you do the steps to strengthen the gluten. The first step is to do stretch and fold. At the end, do a window pane test to see if the gluten has becoming a little bit stronger obviously it's not because it's still tearing and then you rest it for 20 minutes and the next step is to do lamination which is another version of stretch and fold but in a bigger scale this is the best way to develop gluten I think And this is another way to develop gluten. This is called bench fold. It achieves the same thing basically. And then you rest your dough for 30 minutes in a shallow grease pyrex dish. If you want to take a sample dough, this is a good time to do it. So you can monitor the progress of your dough rise easier. In the end, your dough should rise about 40 to 50%. The dough has now relaxed and reached the edge of the dish. So now it's time to do the coil fold, the first coil fold. This is the third step in the strengthening of the dough process. Coil fold is a gentle way to strengthen your gluten. This is why we do it at the later stage of the bulk fermentation. You have to be gentle with this because at this stage the dough already develops some bubbles that you don't want to burst. So you rest it for 15 minutes or until the dough has relaxed and spread to the edge of the dish again. You do as many coil folds as your dough need. It can take up to 6 repetitions with rest period in between each repetition. Every time you do coil fold dough, the dough should be less stretchy than the previous one. So when do you stop coil folding? It's when your fold looks like this. It's very puffy and the dough look like marshmallow. Here's another example from another bake. 
Rest the dough until it has risen by 40 to 50 percent. So another sign that your dough is ready, yeah, you can still see the fold lines after the dough has relaxed and spread to the edge of the Pyrex dish. And you can see lots of bubbles on the side and on the bottom of the dish. The dough is very jiggly with big bubbles on top. No little bubbles, big bubbles. Now it's time to pre-shape. This is the fun part guys, it's like playing Play-Doh. Pre-shaping is needed for two reasons. It's the last chance to strengthen your dough and secondly is to reseal the cut side. See as you can see I divide my dough into three loaves. So those cut edges you need to seal it back up. This is when you do pre-shaping. Sometimes I skip this stage if I only do one loaf or when I know that my dough doesn't need strengthening anymore. And you flip the dough so that the seam is facing the bench. Now that you finish pre-shaping, you can cover the dough to rest for 15 minutes. You can use either a container or a damp kitchen towel. And then it's time to final shape. You want to get your dough into like a square shape. And then you grab one side and you fold it a third of the way. And then you grab the other side and seal it. And then you roll it towards yourself confidently and as you can see here I'm actually putting it into a loaf pan so put the seam side down and this one is actually the second dough see fold one side a third of the way and then close it up and then roll the dough towards yourself again and then this one is actually going to a proving basket and um, for that you need to put the seam side up now you want to stitch the seam to tighten and secure your dough and then sprinkle some um, rice flour around the edges and on the top of the dough bench rest your dough for one hour and then straight into a cold fridge for overnight proving. The following morning about 5 o'clock I preheat the oven and the Dutch oven in a 250 degrees Celsius oven for 45 minutes. When the oven is ready get your dough out of your fridge and then flip it carefully onto a baking sheet and then you sprinkle with um, rice flour you can decorate it and then don't forget to score your bread so that the steam can escape through that score area you have to do it quite deep quickly put the dough in the dutch oven and cover it and bake it for 25 minutes in a 250 degrees celsius oven after 25 minutes, you remove the lid and brown the bread in 220 degrees Celsius for 18 minutes. And then you take it out and leave it to cool for about 1 to 4 hours. Otherwise, you will have a wet crumb on the inside. So I'm pretty happy with this bake. But trust me, I've baked about 5 prior to this where I ended up with a really flat um, sourdough and the reason for all those fails is because I was impatient and I used immature starter or I didn't get the bulk fermentation time right when you do you ended up with a very soft and not wet open crumb sourdough thank you for coming along to my sourdough journey now please enjoy the rest of the video bye
birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun Sleep. Hear the crickets, see the moon. Side by side and through and through. No limit to what we can do. Oh, we know what we have. Let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life. Call us crazy. What are you having for lunch? A chunky steak pie. Finally found a place that sells good pies. Like usually they're all dodgy. These are really good, really tasty pies. Cool. Oh. This is the same place that we went and get our bread mm. and bakery. This sausage roll, it's a fantastic. Yeah, this is the first time we're trying the they're pies. They're pie, yeah. yeah. And they are, they are really good, really good pies. Oh, good to hear. I suppose on the second um, pie, this is curry pie. Second pie. Curry pies are fantastic. Got a bit of bite to them, which is what I like. Oh. It's not that jelly stuff you usually get in your pies. It's actual proper gravy. It's, it's really good. One thing I hate about some pies when you're eating them, the lids come off and it goes everywhere. These are great. They hold, they hold together really well. I, I can't say anything better about them. They're just good pies. Glad <laughs> I went there. Love my pies. You're over the moon.